Now we're on chapter six, lesson three, estimate fraction sums and differences. Just looking at the title alone, we know that we're not gonna find exact answers because estimate means to round. And sums and differences gets us to know that we're going to be both adding and subtracting because sum is the answer to an addition problem and difference is the answer to subtraction problem. So therefore, what I've been noticing a lot in a lot of the homework is that students aren't really paying attention to the plus and minus signs, the addition and subtraction signs. So they have all the steps right, but at the end when they're supposed to add or subtract, they do the wrong one and it just messes up their whole answer. So just be very cautious of that. Uh, you know, if you want to use that mathematical practice um, that's attending to precision. That being said, with estimating, for now we're going to be using a number line to show our work. And I would expect a number line for all of the problems on this lesson. Later on in, I think, 6-8 or so, we're going to estimate again, and I'm going to teach you another way without the number line that's a little bit faster. But for now, I'm going to show you how to set up the number line using fractions because the tick marks or the tallies in between are constantly going to change depending on the denominator, which is the bottom number. When we round, we're going to round to the, whole, to the nearest whole number. So... We're going to start with number one. Actually, um, we'll start with number two. Um, and the problem is one eighth plus one fourth. We will be making a number line for each of the different numbers. So one number line for one eighth and one number line for one fourth. And this number line is going to tell us what to round to. So if we do a number line for one eighth, what we're going to do is we're going to think about what are the three possible answers that we will round one eighth to. Since one eighth does not have a whole number, a large number in front of it, you will round it to either zero, half, or one. Zero, half, or one. So those are your three possible answers when rounding one eighth. The answers will either be zero, one half, or one. And so to start my number line, I'm going to put those three options at the bottom. Zero, one half, and one. With one half being as close to the middle of zero and one as possible. From there, I'm going to look at our denominator. The denominator is the bottom number. And that's the denominator that I'll be using for this number line. So since the denominator is eight, I'm going to be putting on top of zero, zero over eight. 0 over 8 is equivalent to 0 because you have none of that, um, that fraction. For the one whole, a whole is if you have the whole piece, not more, not less. So if the denominator is 8, you're going to have exactly 8. 7 would be less than 1. Anything above 8, like 9, would be more than 1. So if you have one whole, it's 8 over 8. So the first thing you're going to do when you set up your number line is think about what are your three possible answers and it's zero, half, or one. Then you're gonna use your denominator to label the zero over eight and the eight over eight for your zero and your one. For the half, you just think about what is half of eight. Half of eight is like a division problem, eight divided by two. Eight divided by two is four, and so one half is four eighths. So let me break that down again. The first step is to start with your three possible answers, zero, half, and one. The next step is to look at your denominator and to use that denominator throughout this number line. At zero, you'll have none of that denominator, zero out of eight. At one, you'll have exactly that same amount, eight out of eight. The trickiest part is the half. You do eight divided by two, which is four. From there, you're gonna see what tallies you're missing. So after zero, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you're gonna to have to make a tally for one, two, three, which I'll do right now. One, two, three, one eight, two eight, three eights. Then we're at the four eights. And then five, six, seven, and then we'll be at the eight eights. Five, six, seven. If you notice, the denominator is always eight, and here we're just adding one tally each time. That's how to create the number line itself. 
Now when it comes to rounding 1 8 all we have to do is put a dot where the 1 8 is. Now here's the tricky part with the dot. The dot does not go on top of the tally, it does not go below it. It goes where the line intersects. So you can see here, it's kind of where it makes that T, that letter T. The last step to figure out how to round this, remember your three answers are either going to be 0, 1 half, or 1, is to see what is that dot closest to. Is it closest to the 0, the 1 half, or the 1? You can already tell it is very far from the 1, so it will not be that answer. It is not closest to the 1, so you should not estimate it or round it to there. The 1 half it's kind of close to. It is 1, 2, 3 tallies away. But the zero is only one tally away. So you could see here that it's close to the one half, but it's not that close. The answer is zero. So you're going to round one eighth to zero. When we're estimating sums and differences, all we're doing is we're rounding this number to either zero, one half, or one, and we're going to round to zero. And then we're going to add it to the next estimate. So like I said, we're going to be doing two number lines. Now we'll do it for the one-fourth. So here's the fraction one-fourth. The first step for the number line is to say, what are your three possible answers? Since one-fourth does not have a whole number in front of it, your possible answers are going to be zero, one-half, and one. So we're either going to round to zero, one-half, or 1. Once you find your three possible answers, you're now going to work on the tallies themselves. Keep in mind we're going to be looking at the denominator, which is 4. So our denominator will always remain at 4. So for 0, it's 0 out of 4. And for 1 whole, it's you have everything, 4 out of 4. To get to the half, we're going to half our denominator. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. And so this is going to be 2 over 4. So keep in mind that the denominator remains at 4. If it's 0, it's 0 over your denominator, 4. And if it's 1, it's the exact 1, 4 out of 4. Not more, not less. For the half, 4 divided by 2 is 2, 2 of 4. Now we're going to go see what numbers are missing. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're going to put a 1 fourth and a 3 fourths. And you can see, oops, sorry, 1 fourth. Now, creating this number line is probably the most difficult part, but once you go through that, everything else is pretty easy. Because once we have our number line going, keep in mind that that says 1 fourth. Sorry about that. All you have to do is put a dot where the fraction is. The fraction is 1 fourth, so we're going to put a dot right here. And from here we're going to say, is it closest to the 0, half, or 1? Um, just looking through the other one, I think I want to use a second color so it's a little bit easier to see. The 1 fourth to the 1 is very far, so it's not going to be 1. From the 1 half, it's only 1 tick mark away, and from the 0, it's only 1 tick mark away. Because it is the exact distance between zero and a half, you have the ability to choose half or a zero. Neither of them will be wrong. However, if you look at the one before, we already rounded down. We already went to the left. So for this one, I'm personally going to go to the right, and I'm going to change this to one half. I'm going to round it, not change it, but I'm going to round it to one half. And the reason why, since I already went down, I might as well go up for the next one. Now, we're at our last step. We rounded 1 8 to 0. We rounded 1 fourth to 1 half. And all we have to do are add these two numbers. So our estimates are we rounded 1 8 to 0. We rounded 1 fourth to 1 half. 0 plus 1 half is 1 half. And that's all you have to do to estimate fraction sums and differences. I'm going to do another one where this time we have two mixed numbers so that you could see that the process is the same even if you have a mixed number. Keep in mind that you're not changing the denominators in the sense that you're not finding an exact answer. All you're doing is finding the best estimate. 
So all of your answers should end with zero, half, or, or some kind of whole number. Halves or whole numbers. Now normally when I do these videos, I work on numbers one and two. But for this actual lesson, I want to skip to number 10. The reason being is that number 10 has mixed numbers. And a mixed number is a whole number with a fraction. So you can um, play with that idea. As well as the fact that it has a denominator with an odd number. So when we divide by 2, it won't be a perfect number. And so for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to skip to number 10. Number 10 is... Actually, use the bottom side of this paper. 3 and 9 tenths minus 1 and 2 fifths. So we're going to make two number lines, one for three nine-tenths. And for now, that's all I'm going to worry about. I'm not going to worry about the one and two-fifths yet. Last time, our three possible answers were zero, half, and one. This time, we do have a whole number in front of the fraction. So our three possible answers now are either three, three and a half, and four. So this time, our three possible answers are going to be three, three and a half, or four. Being able to know what your possible answers are is a huge part of this number line. So for rounding, we look at that whole number, we could round down to three, or we could round up plus one to four, and then our middle one's three and a half. So very similar to the zero, half, and one, except now we have a whole number, three, three and a half, and four. Other than that bottom part being slightly different, the same process in terms of the fraction is the same. So if you look at number one, we looked at our denominator, which is the bottom number of the fraction. And our denominator in this case is 10. So when we look at the numbers here, we're going to start with on top of the three, a zero out of 10. And on top of the four, a 10 out of 10. The way we got this 10 is that we we're looking at our denominator and then where our first tick mark is, we're going to have zero of them. And at our last tick mark, we're going to have exactly the same amount, 10 out of 10. To get to our half, we're going to do half of 10. So half of 10 is 10 divided by 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5 over 10. So our first step, our second step, I should say, is exactly the same. The denominator is 10. 0 out of 10, 10 out of 10, 0, and the same. And then the middle one is half of the denominator. 10 divided by 2 is 5. From there, we're going to put our markings. We're going to put a 1 tenth, 2 tenth, 3 tenth, 4 tenth in between. And then we're going to, here's the 5 tenth. Then we're going to go to 6, 7, 8, 9. So let's start putting our in-betweens. Keep in mind that I like to make the three, three and a half, and four really long lines so that you could really see them. And then these in-between ones, I go smaller, if you haven't noticed in the first one. So here I go one, two, three, four. One tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five. And then you can see I'm doing smaller lines. Six, seven, eight, nine. And then there's our tenth one. Six, seven, eight, nine, and all of them are in the tenths. Our next step was to put a dot at this fraction, nine tenths. And so we find the nine tenths and we put a dot here, our marking. And our last step is to see, is it going to round to the three, three and a half, and four? And we round it based on what